prior to 1978, when I was, uh, I was in the customs and I was um, the head of customs, and the airport was not that big. We had a small airport, and at that time, uh, His Highness was building the new airport. And I'm talking six years, seven years back, because the airport was built in 1973, the new one, or 72, if I'm, if I'm, you have to correct my dates. And from the old airport, we used to see this monstrous building coming up. And we said, what is Sheikh Rashid doing building such a big airport? We as staff, we as people. And actually his vision was bigger than our vision. He knew exactly what he was doing. He knew that Dubai is one day going to be a real hub for the whole Middle East. I think so. That's what he was thinking. Otherwise to build that big airport at that time, one hour, I think we had four or five flights a day. One was Middle East. Uh, it was British Airways. At that time it was called BOAC. And uh, there was Gulf Air. And there, is, uh, there was uh, some gar cargo flights that used to come. When the airport was built and it started operating, they could not envisage that Dubai is going to have about 800% increase in traffic. And that's what really happened. And when that happened, the chaos started at the airport because the airport was not big enough to handle that increase. So we had people, uh, not enough bathrooms, not enough lounges, not enough so many things. And that's when the Re-engineering started to take place in 1978, where they wanted more lounges, where they wanted more, even the runway was not enough, one runway, they had another one, runway. Now I'm talking in a span of time that I was there for 21 years, okay? So all these requirements came out of the need to change. And this is why envisaging the future is very important. Sheikh Rashid had a vision uh, that really uh, set the basis of this, what you see today. During his time, he did Jabal Ali port, he did Rashid port, he did the airport. It was the policy laid by His Highness, the late His Highness Sheikh Rashid bin Saeed Al Maktoum. He said, this airport is for everyone, and everyone can come and land and do business and fly in and fly out of the airport. Until today that policy is on. Although we have a national carrier like Emirates Airline, which is one of the best airlines in the world, we still don't protect the, 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 uh, the protection that usually a, a national carrier has. Today there are more than 10 airlines that go to to Heathrow from here. So does Emirates Airline. So I think the ground has been made for the best survives and you can do your business and, from, from a and succeed. You know, you can use an airport for so long, then you start to repair that runway. It has to be repaired, it has to be strengthened, it has to be, remember we had the old lighting on the airport, we needed Cat 3 category of lighting and Cat 3 radars and all the other air lighting and all the equipment that goes with that. So you can land anytime in fog in, 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 in situation where the vision or the uh, is, is not very clear. The weather is not very clear so you can really land and that's why it's not only that reason but the reason was the old airport, the old runway needed a lot of maintenance. And to maintain that, that means we had to close it or shorten it. So we opted to build one parallel and do the minor, minor repair what we 
needed to do, but kept on. That runway, the first runway, was servicing the airport. When the new airport was, uh, when the new runway, I, I mean, was ready, a parallel runway to this, the old runway, we closed that runway and we refurbished it and we had two runways which solved our congestion problem for landing and takeoff. When I was appointed in 1978, I had a big responsibility to take. I had to put back the airport in place. I had to do so much. And the support of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed, the present ruler, he was a, a, an aviation uh, a man that always thought how to create an airport which is uh, a model for the, for the region and the world. And he didn't spare anything, nor m he didn't spare money, he didn't spare the best companies. We worked with Bechtel from the United States. And then he appointed me, who I was the best man <laughs> to deal with it. I'm blowing my own trumpet. I was scared for it just when I heard it, that I'd been appointed. But then I took the challenge, and I didn't look back. And we started really working hard. Not to, everybody used to tell us when the airport was completed, that your airport is the best in the region. And I used to always say, I want my airport to be the best in the world and not in the region. And I think that dream came true in these past uh, 10, 15 years. With a, with a great airline like Emirates Airline, a great airport like Dubai, which has one of, best, one of the best duty frees in the world. And don't forget when I say I, it's, it's never one person, it was me and my team. Everybody had an, uh, a credit to be given whoever it was, whether it was Donata, it was the, uh, the police, it was the security, it was the control tower. We all got together and built the airport to what it is today.